We have over 100 videos, but none of them is as big, as complete, and as interesting as this one. So go get a coffee, come back, and let's get down to it. Hi guys, and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel, we're talking about credit cards, points, finances, and travel. If this is something that interests you, please like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. It's been a while since we did any um, business credit card video. Uh, many of you requested this. So today we're going to look at all Chase business credit cards. We're going to put them next to each other, compare them and understand uh, when they make sense and for whom. So because this is going to be uh, much longer than the usual, uh, relax and let's get down to it and uh, come back to wrap it up. Of course, we're going to start with the foundation of uh, every Chase business card, which is the, the ink card. I have the value point here because uh, many of them are co-branded. So it's important to understand how um, all these sign up bonuses and the points collected uh, really affect uh, your return on spend. So we start with uh, the business preferred at 125. It's 125 because you go through the portal and you can redeem that for travel, which is the best case scenario. The current sign up bonus is 100,000 points after spending 15,000 in three months. 15,000. Yeah, you heard that right. I mean, if you have a business and this is something that you're really into, yeah, you can get that. 3x on spending, advertisements, internet, cable, phone, travel, 1x on everything else, and the 25% boost through the travel portal. Um, there's nothing fancy here. There's uh, no memberships on uh, or lounge access. The maximum is 17, 18, and the return on spend is just 11%. For the business cash, uh, the current sign up bonus is $750 after spending seven and a half thousand in the first three months. And yes, this is $750. Uh, dollars, but if you have the ink preferred or you have a personal Sapphire card, you can transfer these, hence the asterisk, uh, is at least $750. Uh, so this one is great because it has the 5x on uh, supply stores, internet, cable, phone, uh, 2x on gas, restaurants, 1x on everything else. I do have this credit card and this is how I pay my phone bill. 5x is great. 15% uh, is the return on spend and then we're moving to the business unlimited and this is the most boring card in the whole uh, Chase ecosystem including every personal credit card. Uh, 1.x on everything and that's it. The sign up bonus is the same as uh, the business cash so we're looking at 12% return on spend because you're not just getting many points. 1.5 on everything. So yeah, that's the best you can expect, 12%. Moving on, uh, we start seeing the co-branded credit cards and I think this is where it's at. Especially this, this page right here. We have Hyatt, we have IHG and Southwest and we will see. Uh, 60,000 points after spending 5,000 in three months for the Hyatt. Uh, $100 credit, uh, $50 increments on this one. So you're going to get $50 and then $50 with the next booking. Um, so $100, uh, it helps uh, with uh, the annual fee of uh, $199, which is kind of high. Uh, 9x on Hyatt, uh, 2x uh, on the three top spending categories. So it could be restaurants, shipping, airline tickets, uh, transit, social media, gas, internet, gym. So basically you can get that 2x. Uh, on the important things. The uh, return on spend, 34%. Much of this return on spend is because of everything that you spend on this credit card, obviously is Hyatt points, and Hyatt's are at least 1.8 cents per point. If you ask me, I've got even more. Um, when you have this kind of credit cards, you get upgrades as well, especially internationally, which is my experience, and I've gotten up to 3x, 3x. So this could be a whole lot more, but I'm very moderate with this one, uh, 34%. On the IHG, the value of points is uh, not nearly close to the high yet. It's a half cent per point, but there's great multipliers. So that balances out. Uh, the sign up bonus is 140,000 uh, points after spending 3,000 in three months, which is incredible. Um, there's an anniversary night uh, up to 40,000 uh, 
points just like the personal uh, credit card and after spending three nights uh, with points you're gonna get one free extra so this is exactly what they have for the personal they just make it business and this is the only card that has exactly the same things basically uh, platinum elite status the discovery stone high yet is really nothing it helps internationally i've gotten that 3x because of my upgrade uh, but the ihg status is much higher uh, in their uh, ranking system 26 uh, x on ihg 5x on travel restaurants uh, gas uh, 3x on everything else they don't have much value these points but they are a lot of points uh, which balances out in the end of the day and we see the return on spend is at 32 percent when it comes to southwest i this southwest i've done the math before i presented it in a separate video where i compare all the southwest credit cards and this one although it came second the first year it came first on the second and every year after so i know for a fact it's an incredible credit card and it's a credit card I would love to uh, change at some point to 80,000 points after spending 5,000 in three months. Uh, there's uh, a 9,000 point credit every year. There's a 365 internet access uh, for flights. So that's about $8 per time. So depending how many times you travel, how much you value this. Uh, it's there, $100 TSA pre-global entry, four upgraded boardings, uh, as you know, Southwest, if you go in the first 15, you get the better seats. And this is something I found going to Costa Rica is about $50 value per time. So $200 is the value I gave to this one, 25% off uh, in-flight purchases. Um, on multipliers, 4X on Southwest, 3x on rapid rewards hotels, uh, car rentals, 2x on internet, cable, phone, transit, 1x on everything else. The return on spend is at 28%. Woo! <sighs> Last group has the Premier, the Southwest Premier. Uh, 60,000 points after spending 3,000 in three months. 6,000 points annually and 25% off in-flight purchases. Uh, the multipliers 3x on southwest 2x on rapid rewards hotels cars re and car rentals uh, transit 1x on everything else uh, the return on spend is at 26 percent united club business this one is a very tough one because it's the most luxurious card in the whole business ecosystem by chase but it's not an impressive one unfortunately and let's see why the current sign up bonus is 100,000 after spending 10,000 in three months 10,000 10,000 in three months so yeah if you get this one and the ink preferred you need 25,000 in three months I mean you really have to have a business to get something like this otherwise forget it the credits is uh, first and second bags free uh, it's about $80 value. So the first they charge you $35. The second is uh, $45. If you add the two is $80 times two because it's maximum two people. So it's $160 per flight potentially or $320 for a round trip for two people with two luggages each. Um, now, Southwest offers that for free and that's why i didn't even put it to their credit cards because it's for everyone it's not a uh, a credit card um perk per, per se everybody gets that two suitcases for free so yeah it's funny that you have to pay 450 dollar annual fee with united to get something like that uh, but that tells you the kind of value that southwest brings to the table memberships avis president's club and lounge access united club and this includes all star alliance uh, lounges uh the multipliers are just to laugh 2x on united then 1.5 on everything else i mean come on uh 14 is the return on spend uh keep in mind this doesn't include any lounge access so if you value that great that's fine. The United Business Mileage Plus, 75,000 points after spending 5,000 in three months. There's only one check back free, $35 up to two people, 25% uh, off in in-flight uh, in purchases. 
there's two one-time passes for the United Club per year. The multipliers, 2x on United, 2x on restaurants, gas, office supply stores, transit, 1x on everything else. And the return on spend is 25%. You see what kind of difference the annual fee makes, right? As we know, what happens in the first year is only part of the equation. What's important is also what happens in the second and every year after. We apply our standard budget of uh, $12,000 uh, equally spread between uh, travel, restaurants, uh, gas and groceries. Now, I understand these are business credit cards. I doubt that there's many people or too many people that use them only for that. Uh, if you do, that's great. You can potentially get a whole lot more value uh, from these credit cards. Uh, but these we're looking at standalone with regular uh, shopping. And just keep that in mind. 1% on the business preferred. Uh, 1.5 on business cash. 1.5 on business unlimited. Um, so yeah, not, not the whole lot of value on the Chase Inc. credit cards. Now... If we were to combine them uh, to make a trifecta, if we were using this for actual business spending, it would probably be closer to four or five percent. But we have to keep uh, a baseline to be able to compare them uh, fairly, uh, because the other credit cards they, you can you can make a trifecta with those, uh, or you can make a whole bunch of combinations. So it's up to you. And this is where all these credit cards, the co-branded credit cards that I've talked in the past about chase are shining they are incredible all of them look at this five percent for hyatt six percent on ihg and four percent on southwest come on guys it doesn't get better than this like if you combine all these credit cards you get an average of five percent like it, it's crazy the kind of value you're getting from these credit cards is crazy um i would argue that Unfortunately, and I know I, I, I did read the polls, you guys love Hyatt more than anything, but, and I, I do too, I do too, but this incredible IHG new credit cards are just incredible. I mean, it offers the same kind of things that it offers on the standard personal version, and that makes it, that makes it unbeatable, really. Looking at the Southwest Premier, uh, the return on spend drops to 2%, United Club Business 1%, and the, the standard United Mileage Plus is at 3%. Uh, and this is because, again, I'm not counting anything for lounge access or like the status, the Avis uh, President's Club, I'm not adding those. So I'm adding basically what I have as hardcore data numbers so looking for the first year really the worst card you can get based on return on spend is the ink preferred the ink preferred really did a whole lot worse than i thought and i already thought it was not that great anymore because i actually downgraded this card to a second business unlimited and then i upgraded one of my freedom cards uh into a sapphire preferred so i know that the there's a big gap between this card and its uh, personal card side of it. So, uh, mm. sixth is the business cash. Eighth is the business unlimited. First for the first year is uh, the world of Hyatt. Uh, second is the IHG. We see third here um, is the um, Southwest uh, performance. Fourth is the Southwest uh, premier. Uh, seventh, seventh is the United Club uh, business and fifth uh, is the United uh, Mileage Plus. For the second year, um, the business preferred is eighth instead of ninth. And this is mainly because although it shares the last position at 1% with the United Club business, I decided to put it one step up because you have the potential of transferring points, making trifectas. It's a flexible currency instead of uh, dedicated. Sixth is the business cash. Seventh is the business unlimited. Second is the uh, world of Hyatt. Then first is the IHG. 
third is the Southwest uh, performance, uh, fifth is the rapid rewards, ninth last is the United Club Business and fourth is the United Business Mileage Plus and seeing them next to each other the first and second year we see how um, some things change but the first three they just change with each other. Hyatt is incredible it comes from first the first year to second the second year but then the IHG becomes from second first on the second year uh, the most solid stable card is really the Southwest Performance. Uh, the, and then we see little differences. I mean, I, I'm not going to comment on this anymore. Uh, this video is taking already too long. Jesus. So what we see here is that if you get a one credit card, standalone credit card, Every time it makes more sense in the Chase ecosystem to get a co-branded hotel credit card or the Southwest, um, the expensive version, the performance, uh, they are incredible credit cards no matter how you see it. All the other credit cards have the potential to get to the same kind of returns if you use them the right way and if you value some of the things that they offer, like lounge access, like uh, status, like the Avis President's Club, status um, or you use them as trifecta like all the ink cards uh, and you use them for work related activities there was a time not so long ago when i got my ink credit cards i got some amazing values out of them i got fifty thousand points after spending uh, like two three thousand dollars in three months it didn't matter if i used them or not because the spending was not that much uh, the bonus was very good and it was irrelevant if I use them or not. And actually the cost, the, the ink cash I have been using to pay my phone bills and get that 5x. Uh, but they don't make any sense anymore. I mean, if you want to spend 15,000 for the preferred and then seven and a half for the cash, another seven and a half for the unlimited and you put them together, you have 15 plus 15 $30,000, $30,000 of spending to get 250,000 points. 250,000 points is roughly two and a half thousand. Even if we add the 1.25 multiplier is gonna go like to 3,000. So you're gonna spend, you're gonna get a 10% return on the sign up bonus alone. If, if with the multipliers and all the spending you're gonna do, it's gonna be a, a little more but 10% on the bonus alone. And there's a whole lot better you can do if you have $30,000 to spend on sign up bonuses. I would get these cards, uh, the ink cards, that is, if there's nothing for me else to get, if I want to close the this cycle within the Chase ecosystem, if I'm still under 524, if I know I can spend this kind of money to hit the sign up bonus, I would absolutely do it. Uh, before I move on to other issuers. But if, you, if you're not sure, if you stress too much to hit that $7,500 uh, uh, spending requirement or the $15,000, do not even bother. You can get a whole lot more value, if you ask me, by World of Hyatt, IHG, and Southwest. Uh, it's just a better deal. The numbers speak for themselves. It's much easier, stress-free and it's going to add to your travel experience. Out of all these credit cards, I actually now have only two. I have the Business Cash and the Business Unlimited. I used to have the Preferred. I just downgraded it to a second Unlimited uh, because, again, I upgraded one of my freedoms to uh, Sapphire. So that's all for today. Let me know what do you guys think. Uh, how do you like these credit cards? If you have any of these credit cards, how do you use them? What kind of values you're getting? Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, ciao.